all like to have a freer, fuller life? Hello, I'm Chester Elton, and this is my dear friend and co-author, Adrian Gostick. Well, thank you, Jess. Yeah, our guest today has worked with celebrities, famous athletes, and many others to help them overcome fear and pursue the goals that they want to pursue. We're excited to learn from her. As always, we hope the time you spend with us will help reduce the stigma of anxiety at work and in your personal life. Yes, with us is our new friend, Dr. Tara Perry. Tara received a certification as a rapid transformational therapy therapist and as a clinical hypnotherapist and doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. She has served as a professor at UCLA's Arthur Ashe Center and California's Emperor's College of Acupuncture. She is the host of the Next Level Healing Podcast. Tara, we are delighted to have you on our podcast. Thanks for, thanks for finding the time. I am so grateful to be here with you guys. You guys are a blast, and I love the information that you're putting out. Well, thanks so much, Tara. You you specialize, so our guests get to know you, our, our listeners get to know you. You specialize in something you call core trauma transformation, which is you know, helping people get to the root of their biggest blocks, which is so important. Um, so walk us through a little of this process, how you get people to connect to their authentic selves and find what we're all looking for, which is peace. Great question. So I often find that we're like iPhone 14s running around with <laughs> iPhone 3 technology, truly. And it's crazy how computer-like our brains can be. So if there's something stuck in there, um, you not only need to delete it, but you need to write over it. And uh, we're living in a really exciting time because, uh, you know, 50 years ago, people didn't know how to do this stuff so well, but it's, it's emerging more and more. And there's such wonderful tools. And, and one great thing about COVID is that it allowed programs like this to exist where people can find the answers they're looking for. So um, by connecting to that feeling that somebody doesn't like the thing that they've been resisting. It's, you know, what you resist persists and it's there for a reason. And often it's a good reason. It's trying to help you. Um, but it's stuck with iPhone three technology when you're really an iPhone 14. So, um, it's different for different people, but the commonalities are there as well. So when I can work with somebody and have them explain to me what the feeling is, and it can vary from stress, anxiety, numbness. I'm, numbness is, is like really, really shut down, and people get really frustrated with that one because it's like, well, how do I deal with that? That's even not a feeling. It's like I can't even feel my feelings. I'm so out of it. Um, but it might be anger. It might be depression. Uh, but where, you know, where is it hanging out in your body? What triggers it? You know, what color is it? What temperature is it? Um, you know, what are the qualities of it? And then just tune into that. And then by going into the subconscious mind, which scientists now know is 90 to 95% of our brain um, and what our experience of life is, uh, you can have better access to what's pulling the levers behind the curtain. I, I often feel like I'm Glenda the Good Witch. I just basically <laughs> return people to who they really are. Um, and when you see, you know, it's really just a little wizened man behind the court curtain that doesn't really have any power. Um, if you look at the ancient traditions, they often describe it as believing that the snake in the road is a real snake when it actually is a rope. Um, so, and you guys talk about perspective on your show. I've, I've heard pr programs that you've done where, you know, by just changing perspective, um, there's tremendous power in that. So uh, again, it's different for different people. Um, but by identifying what is pulling the levers behind those feelings, we can more quickly help somebody move out of that and upgrade themselves to the iPhone 14 that they really are. Well, listen, I'm so glad you're the good witch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever want to have the bad witch on our show, Adrian. Well, you know, Wicked turned that on its head because it turned out that Alphaba <laughs> was actually... And you know what's so crazy about that? I'm actually taking voice lessons right now with the woman who did that on Broadway, did the oh, Alphaba wow. uh, character on Broadway. Channeling your inner witch. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let, let, let's move on. You know, you say that you can't heal when your mind is in fight or flight mode. And when the sympathetic nervous uh, system mode, we want to flee, fight or freeze or fawn, right? So mm -hmm. explain, what, uh, explain what we feel with panic and how to overcome and work through those feelings. 
That's another phenomenal question. And um, I find that the reason a lot of people get phenomenal health outcomes with uh, my process is that we're dialing back that. It, it's like having your um, fire alarm go off in your house all the time. You know, how useful is that? It's not useful at all. You just, you know, become deaf, you get irritated, you get angry, you get frustrated, um, and you ignore it. It, it. it serves no purpose. So by dialing it way, way, way back, um, if you think of a, a deer in the woods, you know, they're eating grass, life is good, their immune system is functioning, their digestive system is functioning, their hormonal system is functioning, and then it sees a coyote, and then, ooh, ooh, danger, and then it bolts for safety, Um, and as soon as it's back in safety, it it returns from that alarm system on function, which is your sympathetic being turned on, to the alarm system off function, which is the parasympathetic nervous system, where your digestive system is functioning, your immune system is functioning, your hormonal system is functioning, you're calm and life is good. So in in the animal kingdom, you know, an animal doesn't carry that stress around forever. As soon as the danger is gone, it returns to the parasympathetic mode where it's in health. Humans have gotten this crazy situation going on, especially if, God forbid, you have the new on all the time (laughs) where you're you know the fire alarm is going off all the time 24 7 365 even in sleep which is tragic so you don't have an immune system fully functioning or maybe even functioning at all or a hormonal system Um, you know all those systems are turned off or shut way 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 back and that's harmful really really harmful so we want to cultivate whatever it takes to get calm, get peaceful. And there are a lot of tools for that. Um, Meditation's a huge one. Um, Big, 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 big fan of meditation. Um, um, I'm a big Joe Dispenza fan. I'm I'm going to my sixth live event uh, coming up next month. And what I love about the work that he's doing is that he's uh, quantifying the science behind it. He's letting science speak for itself. Uh, people like Vim Hof are doing amazing work with breath work and, and cold therapy, which I'm also really into right now. Yeah, are you guys into that at all? I just go into the sun and then jump into a really cold lake. I don't know there if it's cold There you go. Therapy, no, cold sure lake is great. great. Yeah. Yeah. Especially I've, I've, where Adrian yeah. is in the wintertime. Yeah. Uh, he'll have <laughs> gone into the... I've tried the cold, I've tried the, yeah, the cold therapy. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I was a huge fan or not, but I, <laughs> I, I've certainly tried it. Yeah. Well, it's different. I wouldn't say jumping into a cryo thing in, a, in yeah. your chiropractor's office is the same at all. I mean, that like forcibly makes you like... A million degrees below zero in, yeah. in 45 seconds or whatever it is. I don't yeah. remember. Um, and it's a fun experience. But if you master your mind, and and um, I recently did um, seven minutes in, in 47 degrees, and uh, it's it, you really reach this delicious place. Um, and you have to build up to it and, you know, do yeah. whatever you have to do to be intelligent with your health and blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, they injected Vim Hof with uh, salmonella because he's, well, he's just like Superman now. He's, his immune system is so intact. His growth hormone is spectacular. He didn't even get a fever from it. Yikes. Hey, I want to jump back to the um, animal kingdom and versus the human kingdom. I had an experience just a few days ago and it was shocking to me so we were leaving town we were driving up to go upstate new york and a little fawn literally jumped out in front of our car and we hit him now we weren't going very fast and it was horrifying here's this little fawn like tumbling must must have tumbled i'm six or seven times fur flying everywhere i think oh my goodness we've broken this little fawn's legs or neck or whatever and the little fawn jumped up and just trotted away and then we were, you know, completely, you know, destroyed and jumped out of the car and looked at the car and people behind us jumped out. And then I looked over and this little fawn just had stopped on a lawn and just was crazy. Like nothing had happened. So like you say, you know, there's this animal kingdom, the coyotes come, the danger leaves and they're fine again. I thought, this is insane that this fawn recovered within seconds of being hit by a car. So... So what you're saying is we need to become more like the fawn, and when the danger is gone, let it go. Is that, did I get that right? Well, definitely, um, and, and it's, it's discernment, knowing what your, your subconscious is trying to tell you that's an important message that you're not getting, and um, the, the being stuck in an old pattern, you know, being the child that's in the closet while their parents are fighting, um, you know, and, and really doesn't serve you, and it's, it's old and it needs to go. Um, so, 
uh, there is the discernment function. I mean, obviously, if you're a little fawn and you see headlights coming at you, it's really beneficial to bolt <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with as much adrenaline as you can manage. But but 90, I'd say 99% of the adrenaline rush that our society is getting is old information that isn't serving us anymore. And it doesn't help us respond. I mean, if you're, if you're in a stressed out state, you're not performing well in your relationships. Right. You're not performing well at work. Your health isn't functioning. I mean, it really is much more destructive than helpful. And, and this is something, you know, I'm seeing just so much, uh, you know, younger generations, when I talk to them, they tell me it's, it's gun violence in the U S it's, that's something that is on their minds constantly. You know, I'm going into a Walmart. I, you know, is, am I going to be shot? Why? Because we put them through actor shooter drills in school and all this, you know, there was so much, they live with panic. Older generations, you go into their homes, they've got the news on 24-7. Um, and, and as we know, the news is built to bring you back to uh, come back next, next hour because we'll see if the world collapses. So we live with panic in our lives, and it's giving us these emotions. And, and so I think you're exactly right, Tara, is that we've got to shut some of this off. And you're nodding here. Well, I my, turn the freaking news off. I mean, honestly, they are there to create eyeballs and they will stress you out every way they can. I don't even have cable in my house. There are plenty of news outlets. You can get your news in, you know, 15 minutes of reading, whatever, more so than you will get on your news channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think there's all kinds of better. So because I, the, the, the programming that you get is going to be in service of whoever's sponsoring it. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, and that's yeah, why yeah. podcasting is so great because you guys aren't sponsored by horrible people that want to sell you stuff you don't need. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we self-sponsor this one because yeah, this is our passion. So and and it's true. I you know I started out in journalism back in the days when CNN, Fox News were all getting started, and and some of the heads of those networks came in and they said, look, we are running Grandma News, uh, which means if Grant we can get Grandma worked up, she'll tune in again tomorrow. If it uh, bleeds, it leads. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. 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 Okay. So let me get back to so our personal journeys here. Emotions. I wanted to ask you about this because look, you said already emotions are clues. So what clues are we missing? Do you think most of us in our lives, and may, how do we become more aware of those clues? That's a great question. Um, and again, um, I find that the key is buried in the subconscious mind. So if it is possible to work with somebody who can just guide you there and give you the yellow brick road, um, obviously you're the participant. I can't make anybody think they don't, anything they don't want to think or believe anything they don't want to believe. In fact, throughout the process, I'm saying, did I get that right? Because it has to be authentically correct for them. You know, it's their experience of life and moving them from where they are to where they want to go is about really sensitively being in touch with that. Um, I'm not imprinting my stuff onto them. I'm using what is real for them, what the leverage points are for them. So it is more challenging to do this on your own, but if uh, there's limited resources, if, you know, whatever, um, you know, uh, getting meditation is great. It just takes sometimes a long time because people don't understand how it works. They don't understand. I, in fact, I was in uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza's microbiome study about a year and a half ago. And one great outcome from that is that he showed, well, first of all, that if you, your microbiome, which is your gut bacteria, which everybody who's in holistic medicine knows is critical to your good health. You know, you want all those good guys in your gut, you know, a healthy adult has pounds of of good gut flora and if you destroy that through repeated antibiotic use stress whatever you're handicapped seriously when it comes to fighting off illness so he showed that in just seven days of of this wonderful meditation that was deep and a lot (laughs) um, you had a measurably more powerful microbiome and the scientists are their jaws are just on the floor they're like we have never there there is no drug that does this And what's also beautiful about it, um, and and again, I recommend meditation to everybody, and you just need to find the right 
meditation tools that are right for you the right I mean anybody can go on YouTube and there's a gazillion Dr. Joe meditations find one that you like whether it's 10 minutes an hour whatever but getting really quiet with yourself and and letting uh, my meditation teacher years ago who's an amazing human being he goes into prisons and teaches prisoners how to meditate and won the pass award because it you know people don't go back to prison once they can connect to this you know Oprah did a thing on on prisoners it, when you connect to that deep 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 hidden part of you um, just with fearlessness and and presence and and just being there with it and allowing it to like a knot unravel like a flower in the sun opening up um, it's it's so powerful in terms of your your life experience because you move out of the what's so common was in western culture you know we get stressed out and we either go shopping we uh, do drugs and by drugs i mean alcohol hello that's a drug um or whatever um we check out we we aren't present and there's just such i mean that's why eckhart tolle's the power of now was a worldwide bestseller people are like wow the present moment is really incredible and when people do my process it's like they've dumped a you know 100 pound backpack they didn't even know they were carrying and there's just this freedom in being completely aware completely present present mindfulness anybody who's studied that or practiced it um, experiences the the health benefits the the awareness benefits you you you're you're a nicer person to hang around Um, you know you're aware of what people's issues are more easily you're less likely to say the wrong thing that you know you guys did this great show with somebody whose boss said something and, you know, she spent years, the boss didn't even remember it. He was just having a bad day. Well, your bad days will be less and you'll be more aware of the impact that you have on others. Because even just, you know, smiling at somebody at the supermarket can prevent a suicide or it can cause a scientist to go home and go, wow, I've got more energy today. I'm going to go solve, you know, the, the cure for whatever. It's yeah, the butterfly it, effect. Yeah, isn't it interesting those those simple little moments that can make a big difference? And I hope I know. answered your question. I, I can go <laughs> off on fourteen different tangents because I I just I'm so fascinated with this stuff. It's been a passion of mine forever. Um, you know, it was twenty three years of acupuncture and nutritional medicine, and I love what that does for people. But now this is like this is what I was born to do. <laughs> oh, good for you. Well, you know, as Adrian and I often say to our guests. I think it's important you get excited about something and stick with it, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, you talk about feeling empty inside. Uh, mm. that people even, and I think sometimes especially really successful people can feel like something's missing. How do you, how do you overcome that? You guys have talked about imposter syndrome, and it's Mm -hmm. a real thing. And this exists at all levels of society. Um, And people look at people who are really, really successful. They admire them. And then, you know, we don't even realize what's going on behind the curtain. You know, the next thing you know, they've suicided, which is tragic. Um, But uh, I don't know if you guys follow Zach Bush at all. He's an amazing oncologist who... um, There's this wonderful uh, eight-minute mind-blowing video of him where he revives three people in the ER that weekend. And for a doctor, that's like, wow, I have brought somebody back from death. I'm a hero. Well, guess what the three people said to him when they, when they, and these are people from all different backgrounds. One had a room full of people. He was beloved. He was uh, some uh, preacher or something. And then there was two other people. It was, it was three completely disparate backgrounds. And guess what they all said when he revived them? Why did you bring me back? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Because they had gone to this place where there was like this, you know, I I love near-death experiences. Um, In fact, a great one is uh, Anita Marjani called Dying to Be Myself. Um, She had a near-death experience. um, And the message that she got when she was in this incredible acceptance, warm, loving light was go back and live your life as fully as possible if you want she said the, the the message was you can transition if you want but you also have the option to go back so she came back and and her cancer which was in every particle of her body it was everything was shutting down vanished i mean it just went away faster than the doctors the doctors didn't even know how to chart her 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 progress because they had never it had never happened before so the message was is to you know to be fearlessly yourself like you said find what you're passionate about and live it i i think you know anybody that resonates with what we're saying right now you know if there's a if there's something in your heart that 
you know, you really want to pursue, uh, listen to it and find a way to, you know, if you have a full-time job, maybe start part-time or, or, or if there's an avenue that be open to the possibility that that's why you're here on planet earth breathing, that this might be your thing. Um, uh, you know, you hear story after story after story of somebody grinding it out in a job that they hate and then they get a terminal illness and then they're like, well, there's no point in doing this anymore. I might as well go do what I love. They go do what they love and the cancer goes away. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, how can people learn more about your work, Tara? Where would you send them? So uh, you can go to consultterra.com or removethepain.com <laughs> or nashvillehealer.com. That will all take you to my website. You can uh, click the button, let's talk, and there's um, some questions to answer just to see if you're a good fit. I like people to really you know, take stock of what the challenge that they're um, dealing with, whether it's fear, frustration, anxiety, is costing them. You know, is it, is it affecting your personal life? Is it affecting your work life? Is it affecting your health? Because all three are very real. Um, and then, you know, let's start with that. And if we wave a magic wand and it's gone, you know, what does life look like then? Um, so that's kind of the, the roadmap that we start out with. <clears throat> um, I also have a podcast uh, called Next Level Healing. I did a, a recent one that everybody's really raving about with a guy named Mark Gober. Uh, he uh, wrote the best book on consciousness I've ever read. Um, like I say, I've been into this for decades, and um, quantum physics has always been a complete fascination of mine. He's um, taken all the scientific information and uh, put it in a single place really, really, really well. He looks at all kinds of phenomena that um, could not be chance. I mean, it just when you look at the aggregate of information, it's way beyond chance. So um, that's one thing that's available on there. Um, I also, well, anyway, I won't get into all my interviews. Oh, no, that's great. That's great. There's lots to dig in, and I'm sure people will check you out from from our conversation here. It looks like our time is getting getting a little tight, so give us some strategies for those who are dealing with anxiety, maybe something we haven't talked about. You've already given us lots of great advice with meditation, understanding really what's going on in your subconscious. Anything else that for people who are living with anxiety that you would recommend? So as we know from Atomic Habits, you really only need to get 1% better each day and then that compounds on itself and then, you know, always looking back in time uh, to measure your progress so that you can feel good and get your nervous system all excited. Um, So yeah, all of those tools are great. Um, Nutrition is a big deal because if your blood sugar is screaming up and down all over the place and you're not um, putting delicious nutritious organic foods into your body then the cells don't have a lot to work with um and and part of being a healthy person today is is not only taking in high levels of of good quality nutrition but also getting rid of the toxicity that no longer serves you so clean 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 food know where your food comes from um i'm you know if you're going to consume animal products then make them pasture raised because they have higher omega-3s and lower omega-6s they're less inflammatory inflammation is a big big problem when it comes to feeling healthy happy and normal Um, you know, your water supply, if you can get clean, healthy water, because if you're drinking city water, that's gone through all those pipes and has all those chemicals put in, I went to the water treatment plant here, and this is a really good one here in this area, but it's still shocking what our water goes through. Um, so yeah, healthy nutrition, um, and, and frame of mind, taking responsibility for your, your beingness. Um, if your issue is blaming other people, other situations, you know, what can you do to fix things and make things better? Cause there's always something. Um, and what can you learn from the situation you know maybe you can make it instead of a bad thing like hey this is presented to me because there's something amazing for me to learn here so that's a handful of more things <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know it's it's interesting um we write a lot about gratitude mm. so we, we would love you know your take on that walk us i'm really grateful you that you mentioned that because <laughs> i know you guys have a book on it um i mm-hmm. just interviewed uh christy nelson who went through horrible 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 cancer and uh gratitude was something that helped pull her through i'd say two of the biggest he- powers um it for the human being is uh, is gratitude and forgiveness oh nice uh, what are, what are some daily practices in gratitude and forgiveness just 
Well, there's the prayer of Honopono, which everybody loves. Um, it's a Hawaiian prayer. You can Google it easily. Um, there's a, a short version and a long version. Um, but it, it's basically, you know, I'm sorry. And that's to whoever, whatever, including yourself. Um, people are, often are, are so giving and loving to other people and they're just miserable and horrible to themselves. And I was in this category for a long time. I didn't realize how much, honestly, self-hatred I was carrying around and and that's so damaging and destructive. Your nervous system does not like that. <laughs> uh, so really finding out what that's all about and, and loving yourself um, and, and behaving in a way that, you know, makes you want to love yourself, which means being kind to others, um, being kind to yourself. Um, you know, I always say the nervous system is like a puppy dog and you can't beat it with a newspaper all the time and expect <laughs> that puppy dog to grow up into anything that's going to be wonderful to be with it's going to whimper and and become you know a learned helpless blob in the corner (laughs) (laughs) so you know be kind to the puppy dog within be kind to others um the the honopono prayer goes uh, i'm sorry please forgive me um i love you thank you it's four simple 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 lines um it comes up a lot in the work that i do when people want to just get the last piece of love uh, forgiveness in whatever situation so um I, d- I do use that a lot well this has been such a great conversation tara we appreciate you being with us today um any last thoughts before we send you off into into the sunset today <laughs> any couple of big takeaways you'd like our listeners to leave with wow well i do have to say attitude is 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 huge and um, i do love the concept of life is happening for me not to me so if you can step out of victimness and think, wow, what is there to learn here? What's the gift? Um, which goes along a lot with the gratitude that you're talking about. Excellent. Listen, it's been a delight uh, to have you on the show. Um, thanks for sharing your enthusiasm, your knowledge, your wisdom. It, it really has been a delight. So uh, good luck in your work. Keep bringing the joy. And we're just <laughs> delighted to have you on the podcast. Thanks, Chess and Adrian. It's been absolutely fabulous being here with you guys. Yeah, some some great information from uh, Dr. Tara Perry, who says our brains are computer-like and we got to start deleting some of the bad data we've got on there. Yeah, I think that's hard. <laughs> you know, I, 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 we're not programmed to delete. We're programmed to save and store and rethink mm. and, and all yeah. that stuff. It was interesting to me when she said 90 to 95 percent of your brain is subconscious. And so you've really got to work on, like you say, that programming there. If you're, if you're going to get better, that uh, we get stuck. We don't like being stuck. How do you get unstuck? I, I really um, was fascinated by her analogy to the animal kingdom. That animals are really good about letting things go. We need to be a little bit more, uh, you know, programmed to hey, the danger's gone. Don't yeah. Don't stew. Don't think about it. Don't relive it over and over again. Just, you know, as our friend Marshall Move Goldsmith on. says, let it go. It's over. Let it go. And, and we don't, as we talked about, there are fire alarms going off in our brains yeah. all day long. Um, and we, we, you know, we, we continue this. We look at social media that just gives us things that, that you know, work, work ourselves up. We watch the news. We, we talk to friends who get us worked up. We don't get to that calm. And so how are you going to calm your mind as we go through it here? This is, it's a good takeaway. Yeah. What clues are we missing was, was one of the questions we asked her. And she said, you know, you really got to take charge and be responsible for yourself. You know, mm-hmm. find that quiet time, find that meditation time and take responsibility for that. I looked up the um, prayer of Honopono. I'd, I'd never heard of that before. I'd, oh, you'd think that it would have come up in the work we're doing. But this idea of I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, and I love you. Uh, interesting, just you know, uh, phrases and mantras to go through during the day to to keep yeah. your mind right. Yeah, and as we do executive coaching, you know, we talk to people about you know, come up with a mantra. What are you going to have in your mind? You know, the the, the famous Pete Sampras, right? Who uh, you you were telling me? I think it was everything's going to be okay, wasn't it? Something yeah, like that. All is well. Yeah. Yeah, all is well. All is well. Yeah. doesn't matter if I'm down by, you know, a couple of games or I'm up. All is well. And it's, well. it's a good mantra. And, I, and I, as I coach, I teach people to, you know, have that mantra that you're going to go into a meeting or you're going to go to a stressful situation. 
uh, what's your mantra to, to step out of victimhood, as you say, as, right. as she said, and just be able to, to deal with what, what you face? Yeah, the last thing for me was attitudes, which is what you just talked about. Attitudes are huge. You know, adopt that good attitude. Look for the good. Look for the, the brighter side and, uh, and, and things get a lot better. Well, you know, really grateful for great guests. Really grateful for all of you that, uh, that tune in. And a special thanks to our producer, Brent Klein, who takes this uh, mess that we give him and makes it sound really great <laughs> with all the music and everything. And to Christy Lawrence, who helps us find such interesting guests like Tara. And, of course, all of you that take the time to listen. And we, you could be doing anything, and you chose to spend some time with us. We really appreciate that. We do. And if you like the podcast, please download it, share it, um, make posters of it, whatever you want to do with it. Just uh, <laughs> Bumper yeah, stickers. keep it out there. Yeah, because we want to keep building this and have such great, amazing guests on. We'd also love you to visit The Culture Works, thecultureworks.com. There's free resources there, including the first chapter of that best-selling book, Anxiety at Work, which you'll, of course, want to pick up. And, Chester, I think we like speaking to audiences around the world. Is that right? Yeah, I think I like it a little more than you do, but we both have a good time. And I think that's the important point. A book is for your event. If you want to have a great event that talks about culture, teamwork, resilience, uh, whether it's in person or virtual, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about the event. And then where can they find the book, Adrian? Anywhere. Great books are sold. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, wherever you like to get your books, please pick up a copy of Anxiety at Work, and it really will help you in your work and especially help you lead a team. So thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Until next time, we wish you the best of mental health.